I was sitting next to a painting called Transcendence, and that happens to be one of my favorite words, and I thought that was kind of serendipitous um, because I think poets transcend or go beyond what we see ordinarily, what normally everybody would see. We kind of go de at a deeper level. And um, I was reading Robert Firestone's uh, website, and if you haven't been there, I suggest you go. Um, but one of the things he says that really resonates with me is that psychologists help uh, people confront their demons. And when you confront your demons, you're able to uncover your deepest feelings. And I think poets do that, too. So my husband was a, wanted to be a painter. He wanted to be an artist as a child. So now that he's semi-retired, he's gone back to art. And I admire that. Painting. If I can just adjust this. From the first moment we met, I painted your body with my long black hair, wisps up and down from your afro head to your perfectly aligned toes. You shivered in delight, and then my finale was creating an egg-cracking sound over your head, trickling its contents with my light touch of the fingertips down your body until you begged me to stop. For years on end, that was our tantra. Well, at least until our firstborn came along, and my hair got cut into this new mom bob, which you detested because it altered our sexual rituals. Now, decades later, you paint your own art on metal canvases crushed and shellacked as I sit in this rocking chair, hoping and praying that you never crush the heart that has adored you for so long. As I was walking around the gallery, I was reminded of windows for some reason. I, whenever I come to this gallery, this is the second time I've been honored to come here. First time was for the meeting where we were brainstorming this, um, which was amazing. And I think of, I just see windows. So uh, in my book, Anna Isnin, who was one of the people that I really admired, I dedicated this book of poetry to her. I have a poem called Windows. Windows. As a little girl, I hated looking out windows after sunset. The fear began one night at the age of eight while I walked down the creaky wooden stairs of my childhood home for a bedtime snack of milk and cookies. I turned the corner to face our yard, and my eyes were drawn to a moving figure in the same place where so many years before was my inflatable baby pool with ducks painted on the bottom. That creep in the yard wore a woolen mask slipped over his face, leaving dots for his onyx eyes. Like a jelly bean, he jumped around back and forth from side to side and signaled me to come towards him. Petrified, I scurried back up the stairs, getting railing burn as I ran. And finally, in the arms of my doll, I sprawled on my bed and hugged her. I pulled her towards me, holding her so tight as if she could save me from myself. The truth is, she's the only one I ever trusted. Tiny tears. How many of you had those? Tiny tears. The blues. You may think I like the music or the rhythm of the band, but what I speak of is the sadness which engulfs my spirit in this gloomy isolation of unexplainable origins. A dizzying sense of blackness churns about me. I see no wonders created out there. My tears swell like the foam of the cappuccino which opens my eyelids every morning when I really don't want to face another day of loneliness. I hunt for a place to turn, but I'm blinded by the doors slamming around my ventricles and as my heart is squeezed like a girdle to useless hips. I am blinded by my pain and realize that it's just time to die to the sounds of palpating whispers. Okay, on to orgasm. <laughs> Switch, <laughs> since everybody wants to hear that. When I gave my first reading, because this book was launched on Valentine's Day this year, and so my first reading, um, I'm not gonna mention any names, but I had a, <laughs> she knows who I'm talking about. I had red tabs and purple tabs, and the red tabs are like the really dirty ones, and the purple tabs are like, nah, PG. So she kept saying, dirty, dirty, red, red. So I'm gonna read a red one. And she knows who she is. Merci beaucoup, Shetty. Orgasm. 
You have never really told me which ones are the best or which ones you would rather do without. Writhing, restless, and begging for more, you arrive just as eagerly on lonely nights as you do on spontaneous love happenings. You possess me and borrow from me until we get interrupted by foreign night sounds or annoying phone calls which force us to stop and start all over again. Sometimes I think that you think life is centered around you, like the lion of a zodiac always reaching for the pedestal, or the joystick which brings you towards me so warm, so firm, so friendly, in the darkness which hides all those surgical flaws and yellowing undies, stolen by time and sent to me on the night by you, the one I love and want to spasm with over and over all night long. Thinking of you or anything connected with you creates joyous contractions in places only saved for you. Okay, this one, Great Minds Think Alike, this is dedicated to the veterans. This is for Veterans Day. Um, this is called Why I Hate Guns, and it was published... Um, in River's Edge this week. Um, it's also dedicated to my nephew, who's a ranger. Why I hate guns. Yesterday, across my television screen, far-flung pellets and bodies launched like rockets into abandoned fields of hidden soldiers as body parts sprinkle midnight quarters. Baby faces on adult bodies lurk in distant places far from confused brides laden with blossoming bellies and cryptic kids screaming in parks, decorated with unknown futures as holsters hang loose, weighed down by hollow revolvers beside stomach push against sandy fields. Familiar fellows have done the same, like my daughter's friend, years in Afghanistan and this many moons later, still awakens during tormented nights and mornings haunted by imaginary figures tucked around city corners, grasping memories of his service, which left him with a handicap no pill or anything else can remove, not even time. Today, a tear lands on my aged cheek to yesterday's visions of my 18-year-old nephew who has chosen a parallel life, off to military college with a Ziploc bag of toiletries doned in green and black, Photos camouflaged in spiny bushes. As I wonder if he'll ever return or even remember all our Saturday afternoon zoo visits and the laughs beside that sloth exhibit, sunbathing in seals. Those memories all seem so trivial now as he clicks his heels and loads that revolver to the snap of a politician's whim who chooses death over life in the name of false freedom. You ask me to explain this season's melancholy slipping through my veins, and all I can do is tell you that on the 10th anniversary of Dad's passing, the doctors removed my right breast and five years later stabbed me by, by my second diagnosis of cancer, bone marrow. No cure, just treatment. The holiday lights sharpened. Passing along dripping candles from the menorah, I step onto this African soil with dreams of leaving my cells buried there, merging with the history of African fights for survival, even as I know there's no way except through the magical dreams to leave behind what haunts me, the healthy bones that dad had once bestowed. Okay, I woke up. I woke up to a dream that you were in a place you should never have been, and I, because of it, I hurt myself in a way that I shouldn't have. Some thoughts are better kept to ourselves. I was in with this poem because we're in an art gallery. Where else? Where else but in art can you let your fantasies blossom and your dreams flower? Nowhere. Thank you.